Okay, let's analyze some metals, and we're going to make what's called an activity series, but we're only going to do this with a few metals at one time. Okay, so we got a, a description of a situation up here that we need to interpret in terms of chemical equations. This says when solid aluminum is placed in a solution of lead nitrate, lead plates out and deposits in the test tube. But when you try the same thing with silver and that same solution of lead nitrate, no reaction occurs. What we want to do is analyze this in a way where we can tell which one of these metals is the most reactive and which one of these metals is the least reactive. And we actually have three metals to look at. We got solid aluminum, we got solid silver, and then we also have lead ions that are in this solution. So there's still a metal, they just start in solution form as opposed to um, a solid neutral metal. So let's first get some reactions to take a look at. These are all single displacement reactions, aluminum and lead nitrate. So I'm going to write aluminum plus Pb NO32. And when this says lead plates out and deposits, okay, we got to know what that means. What that means is pure lead all of a sudden shows up. Okay? And we started out with lead dissolved as an, as an ion in this solution. Then all of a sudden we put these together and we get solid lead coming out. Okay, solid lead just shows up. What that means is a reaction must have occurred. And aluminum went in and it kicked the lead back out and took its place. And so we get pure lead show up. So if you see something that says deposits or forms or plates out, all of those words mean the same thing. It means a solid metal gets kicked out of the solution. So solid lead is now by itself, and aluminum took its place, and we get Al NO3 free. And yeah, we could go through and balance this. It's not terribly necessary in the analysis we're doing because we're not worried about amounts, but I'll go ahead and balance it just to make some of you feel better. I'm going to put a 2 here and a 3 here to balance the nitrates. That means I need a 3 here and a 2 there. Okay, but like I said, that's not really something that's going to affect our analysis. Okay. Now, let's take a look at the second situation. All right, the second situation says we try silver with the same thing. So silver put in a solution of lead nitrate. When we do that, we don't visibly see anything happen. So I'm going to write that. I'm going to write what happens. I'm going to describe it. Silver plus lead nitrate. And we don't see anything happen. So there's no reason to write a balanced equation for a reaction that we don't visibly see actually occur. So we're just going to say there's no reaction here. Okay. Now what we have to do is take this and interpret what's going on in terms of which metal is most reactive and which metal is least reactive. So here's how you would, would analyze these. All right, if you were to take this first one, for example, aluminum, solid, pure, neutral aluminum, like aluminum foil, is placed into this solution, and all of a sudden a reaction happens. The way we would interpret that is aluminum must be more reactive than lead because it's driving the show. If this single metal by itself actually makes a reaction happen, then that means it was strong enough, it was reactive enough to go in and kick the lead out and take its place. So when you see a, a reaction actually occur, it means this solid metal was reactive enough to say, hey, I'm taking your spot, and it kicks the lead out, and that means aluminum is more reactive than lead. I'm going to write that over here. Aluminum is more reactive than lead. I'm just going to do a greater than sign, okay, like it's higher in reactivity. Now over here, we see silver try the same thing. Silver tries to go in and kick the lead out, but it can't. No reaction happens, which means lead is strong enough to just stay put. Okay, lead is basically able to say, nope, I'm staying, staying right where I'm at. I'm not going to get kicked out of this solution. So silver is not strong enough to go in and boot the lead out. So what that tells us is silver is weaker. It's less reactive. So it means lead is more reactive than silver. So what this tells us is a reaction that happens tells us which one of these is stronger, but a reaction that doesn't happen gives us just as much information. A reaction doesn't occur, it lets us know that the one that was dissolved in the solution must be the stronger metal. So you can learn just as much from a no reaction as you can from one that exists. But it's a process of elimination and just making a, a list of these like highest to lowest. So when I look at these, I would say aluminum is the most reactive metal out of all these. Okay? Aluminum must be the strongest because it kicked lead out. Silver must be the weakest because it couldn't kick lead out, and lead must be in the middle. So I'm going to write aluminum as the most reactive, silver as the least reactive, and then lead goes in the middle. And all we did was use 
whether or not these two reactions happened, which one happened, which one didn't, to make ourselves a list of what must, must be the most reactive and what must be the least. Okay, and so what you're gonna see is several situations like this where you're gonna have to take the description, turn it into some chemical equations, and then interpret what's going on, and come up with a list of what's most reactive and what's least reactive and how they rank in between. And there may be several of them there, but you'll have enough reactions to be able to interpret what's really going on.